everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Apologetically Me. I'm Maggie. I'm Wanda. And we're here today with an, another episode. Our topic today is personalities. God really said, give her some personality. Um, so we're going to talk about that. We have a special guest joining us today. Um, but first, we want to start off with what's new in quarantine. Wanda, tell the people what you got going on. Uh, so last night, we finally beat Minecraft. After, you didn't beat Minecraft. Like, th- okay, so apparently there's you can actually win. Like, there's it's like a quest thing. Like, it's not just like you don't just mine stuff. Like, there's actually like an end goal that you like you beat the dragon what? essentially. Yeah, if you want to watch it, we did stream it. So nice. <laughs> it's three drop hours. Drop that long. stream link. <laughs> but we'll drop um, it in the YouTube bio. It's kind of fun like but like it was very underwhelming like winning was very underwhelming because it's like i felt like we put so much work into it and then and that it was just that is hilarious first of all when you told me you played minecraft i thought that was the funniest thing i've ever heard because you're so like anti not anti-gamer but i've never seen you play a game every time we go to a board game cafe you're like no i need to leave right now i hate it here i can't be seen here my reputation will be destroyed that's different. so the fact that you're playing a game is very mind-blowing i still don't like board game cafes i think board games are filled with germs and you have to pay to be there and i don't like that I like them in theory, but after COVID, I think we cannot go back anymore. Which I am 100% fully okay with. So, side story, I guess. So, Maggie had a birthday last year, and she's having another one this year. So, happy birthday, Maggie. This is going to come out on your birthday. 25 years old, the big two five. Disgusting. Never say that to me again. (laughs) But... Last year when she had her birthday, I didn't drive to the restaurant that we were going to. And after we had all finished eating, everyone was like, we should go to a board game cafe. But I hate board game cafes. And I spent the entire time trying to convince Maggie to not go to her own birthday's board game cafe. It didn't so work. Funny. It, like Maggie always says she wants to be peer pressured. Because she says she'll give in easily, but she didn't give in, and I'm very upset there, about that. There's like a life, shitty life pro tip somewhere on Reddit that's like, always drive yourself. Always bring your own car so you can leave whatever you want. Yes. And I really feel like that was you who wrote it, or you ghost wrote it. <laughs> I, I still refuse to drive places because I am lazy, but I did that think long and hard about doing that after that event. Okay, what's your, what's happening What's your good news of quarantine? So because I'm turning 25, even though you sent me the link to songs that have the number 25 in them, they're not like relevant pop songs. They're very old songs that kind of say the word 25 somewhere in the lyric. So this is my call out to Taylor Swift, Ariana Grande, Khalid, the 1975, whoever out there, please make a song for the 25 year olds out there and the 26 and so on. I can't keep thinking that i peaked at 21 or 22 when was the last song 23 i feel like it's 22 but i feel like 20, there's a... 22 is the big one yeah because taylor swift, swift. yeah uh, but there's my... also no one likes you when you're 23 and miley cyrus oh yeah i guess but not really anything to do with the birthday maggie has also tweeted at all of these people uh they have yes. not responded <laughs> so you'd really um at their management clocks ticking I, i'm not pleased with this customer service please respond quicker <laughs> on that note with twitter so i've been live tweeting from our twitter account it's am girls podcast by the way if you want to follow us but i've been live tweeting bachelor and not live tweeting i guess because i record it and then i watch it when my when i get home from work so i've been tweeting my reactions i tweet out some memes and our engagement rate is through the roof like our tweets have over 150 likes on them. Some, One of them is hitting close to 200, but we still have, I think, seven followers. So this very upsets me. I think there's something wrong with Twitter. So I will be live tweeting again. Please go follow us this time for real. Feel free to like or retweet. Um, but yeah, that was my plug for our Twitter account. <laughs> 
it's just become a desperation for more followers on every single platform that we're on. Basically, I mean, YouTube is our priority, but yeah. it would be nice if we blew up on Twitter or TikTok. I mean, like, it's not, like at the same time, it'd be nice too. That would, that, but you know, yeah, I, I don't. I would like to not have to choose which, yeah, <laughs> which platform. <laughs> on the plus side, you don't have to choose. Just go whatever you want. If you got one of them. Unless you deleted your social media, then if you're a Wanda, then okay, I guess I understand. But even I would like to like the tweets that Maggie tweet out. Uh, but I don't because that's like, you don't like your own tweets. That's very weird. My how I show you my tweets is I take a screenshot of it and then I send it to you and I wait for you to say, haha. I'm like, yes, <laughs> you liked funny. it. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to what the beef. Oh, I don't have my air horn sound. But Wanda, who is your beef of the week? So my beef of the week, uh, even though this is not the week that I watch Soul, but Disney, not well, I guess Disney Pixar has a movie that came out uh, named Soul. And it's supposedly supposed to be more focused on like black people and black culture and everything. And yet it stars Tina Fey as the main, <laughs> like basically the main character. That like, is awful. <laughs> It's like she speaks more than he does, I don't want to say in the movie. Everything about the movie was very unsatisfying. The ending was unsatisfying. Like the whole like representation was like, okay, I guess. But like they could have tried harder. And I feel oh like God, they really felt flat. It's Jamie Foxx. Yeah. Huh. And they let Tina Fey lead Jamie Foxx? <laughs> yeah uh, like it seemed like she was supposed to be the companion but there's a lot of parts where I felt that she like outshined him by a lot and that just might be because of who Tina Fey is as like an actress like she's amazing but maybe they shouldn't have cast her then as like the side character that ended up being the main character I'm reading through its wiki page now and Critical response to Soul has been highly positive. So yeah. clearly you are on your own here. Okay. What is your beef of the week? Back to The Bachelor. So for some context, there was a the girl, Sarah, who left to... She kept saying different things. Like she wanted to go back to take care of her dad. Another thing she said was to The Bachelor, like the girls are so mean to me, I have to leave. So she was very manipulative in that sense and there is one girl who is we don't know if she was placed there by the producers or if they kind of hinted to her that you will get more screen time if you lean into being the villain is it or if she's victoria the queen so she's straight up a horrible person she says the most catty things she (laughs) she got this sweet girl kicked off and it was a red flag immediately for Matt because he believed Victoria over that girl. And everyone in the house was like, I've never seen this sweet girl like say anything mean. She's like a very calm, sweet person. So the fact that Victoria is out to get her is so random to us. So Matt believes her Victoria. Victoria is just like, ha, great. And she continues. She's looking for her next victim. She wants Sarah gone. And then all the girls in the house, for some reason, also side with Victoria. Like they forget everything that Victoria did. So like, yeah, let's get Sarah out of here. And they basically threaten Sarah, like, we're going to make your stay here horrible, which is very catty of them to say, no matter what she did. So Sarah obviously had to leave. And then we have new girls come in. And one of them, she's very confident. She's pretty cool. And then this girl, Anna, starts a rumor saying, oh, my God, I know this girl, Brittany. She is an escort. But Anna talks with her teeth a lot. So she goes, she has an ass car. So she like spreads this rumor around and obviously it gets back to Brittany and hurts her feelings and everyone else in the house hates the new people because they're like, how dare he bring a new people? Like we haven't even got our one-on-one with Matt yet. So everyone's ganging up against the new girls. Victoria there is like riling everyone up and Anna's like taking the charge too. The girls I used to really like, they have turned a complete 180 and now they're depicted as the bullies and mean girls of the house. So I'm super hurt, but I'm personally offended by what has happened in these events. So my beef of the week is Anna for being horrible, for spreading these rumors, and for shaming sex workers. Like, who cares if she's an escort? Why does that matter? Like, get that bread. 
And people were bringing up old pictures of Anna, too, where she worked as a bottle girl at clubs or something. And it's like, how is that different? I mean, there's some differences, but they're also similar. So, at Anna, you're my beef of the week. I hope you're gone next week. That sucks. I Does The Bachelor normally bring on, like, new people? They did last season two for The Bachelor, but that was because they had to change Bachelorettes. So this is the first time they did that. I don't know why. Maybe to spice things up a little bit. But literally every single reality TV show that has done that, like the new people never last. Like in Too Hot to Handle, they literally got like two of them got kicked off Um, in like the circle everyone just gained up like ganged up on the new people and then they got kicked off first like right when they joined they got kicked off because everyone had already like formed a bond already so it's like it doesn't make sense it never works bringing on new people like i think it's just to spice things up our topic again today is god really said give that one personality so what this means is we we did a deep dive into all our personalities. We have taken, if you guys don't know, the 16 personality test. It's supposed to be based off the Myers-Briggs personality test. They ask you a range of questions if you agree with them, disagree, and you're supposed to be, you're supposed to stay away from the neutral, the indifferent, so that they can get an accurate sense of who you are as a person. So as we mentioned earlier, we have a special guest today. Because what does every podcast with two minority females need? A white man. A so, white man. <laughs> this is Jordan. I think I fill that role. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, as you can see, if you're on YouTube, uh, he is my Minecraft partner in crime. Disgusting. <laughs> partner in crime, craft, mine crime. My, if you will. Mine crime craft crime craft (laughs) um did you want to do a short intro of yourself drop your drop your only fans link yeah um it's jordan slash (laughs) feet i don't know what to say there's not a lot to say about myself i'm yeah wanda's minecraft partner um this is a gross way of saying boyfriend girlfriend. By the yeah. way, I just want to clarify that it's, it is pretty gross. It was it was in an earlier. Am I am I canonically Wanda's boyfriend though? Yeah, Maggie said yes. it last week. If you apparently he if doesn't actually listen. listen to the podcast. <laughs> okay, I'm Wanda's boyfriend and a friend of the show. Long time listener, first, first time, time caller. Yes, listener in quotations. <laughs> Watcher, Watcher on two x speed. Yeah, he criticizes my talking because he says I talk too slow when it's not 2x. Well, so. the thing is, yeah, I was watching it on double speed and I got used to it and then I put it back to normal speed and I was like, oh, Wanda talks really slow. I thought what I put it down of, to like half speed. What kind of crackhead watches things on 2x speed? I know. It's like People that Netflix. don't have time. <laughs> oh, sorry we take up too much of your time, Jordan. We're just An trying to week. entertainment, okay? Even though I watch all most of his streams. Yeah, you weren't there last stream. I was there. Yeah. There's I'm been always, a few. Matt I'm, was like, does Wanda even join? I'm Okay, <laughs> so I'm always there when no one else is there. Because mm-hmm. if someone else is there, I'm like, oh, you have company anyways. You don't need me. But I'm always there for the ones that are, aren't that interesting. And, Ouch. like, it's just you Sad. doing, like... Like things that are important to you, but maybe not important to anyone. Want to stop before your relationship ends? No. Yeah. This is what no. Is this? I think that's what good. is your podcast? I think. <laughs> I think this is. Jordan, good. And, I'm not gonna say that I'm the reason, but the recent, the first Twitch stream I joined, it had the most views. Mm-hmm. So I'm not gonna say it's because of me. You got. But I'm not fast. not gonna say. You do know how to draw a crowd. I just say yes, queen, slay. <laughs> Yeah, I think people chat. saw that on the front page and they clicked in. Yes, they, they saw the tiny font. It's through uh, analysis. Matt Hill is actually the biggest crowd drawer. He has, mm-hmm. he made one video get 30 views. So Nice. Oh, wait, is he your TikTok friend? The one that blew up? No, that's the other no. Matt. You know too the many one- Matts. I know. There are a billion Matts and I know most of them. 
Okay, wait. Let they me... all they all come to you. <laughs> I have I have an intro now. Okay, so this is Jordan, the friender of Matt, and you can follow him on Twitter where he doesn't tweet, and you can follow him on YouTube where he occasionally posts videos, and on Twitch where he streams every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at Jordidn't. Mm-hmm. Everything's J O R D I D N T. Consistent, nice. Mm-hmm. Good branding. Very good branding. Okay, next next question. Okay, Jordan, what was your first impression of each of us? Go so through, I have a good go story. Wanda. I Wait. have a good story about meeting Wanda. Not meeting Wanda, but my first impression of Wanda, because we were in the same program in university, and my first memory of Wanda is in our object oriented programming class when we had I think it was a quiz and an assignment due or something. And Wanda basically interrupts the class to say, if the the professor was moving a due date, but he wasn't penalizing anything for it. And it was because nobody had started. And I was one of those people that hadn't started. And Wanda is like, but if we get it done on time, can we get bonus marks? Because Wanda wants bonus marks. And I was like, cool, yeah, whatever. It doesn't apply to me. That's fine. But the trade-off ended up being... I think not moving something or not moving a quiz that I totally wasn't ready for. And so my first impression of Wanda was, I hate this girl. It just <laughs> ruined my life. <laughs> so okay. funny. To, that sounds so like Wanda. <laughs> to be fair, I, I, I need to like, okay. So he didn't tell it like fully correct. So what happened was the professor was like, I think I'm going to move the quiz to the following week. And it's an open book quiz. Like it's an online quiz. It's probably like 15, like 10, 15 questions. It takes you about like 30 to 45 minutes. And he said that he was going to, he wanted to move it to the following week, but because everyone in class has to agree to it, he's like, does anyone have any objections? And I put my hand up because I'm like, Hey, I'm actually really busy that week. I would prefer it to be in the week before. And so right, I remember this now. I it's even worse. <laughs> because I oh, even no. worse. Wanda said, because I will be moderately inconvenienced by this open book 30 minute thing, I refuse. I, I had plans. To let everyone else have their way. I had I had plans the following week that I did not I it would disrupt my schedule if this got changed. It's not my fault that you leave everything to the last minute and not yeah. do it. So this was a class of how many people? Like a hundred something. So you made a hundred enemies that day. Wanda was the one holdout that stopped me from Hey, kudos to the professor though for listening to her. Yeah, I know. And like on the assignment, I ended up getting 108.75%. You didn't need it anyway. I everything worked out for me. (laughs) I mean I did fine. It's it's not a big deal. Doggy dog world, Jordan, you gotta catch up. Mm -hmm, mm Mm-hmm. That's why I'm here to vent my frustrations. Wanda, what was your first impression of him? Okay, so I don't actually remember, like, so we Mm -hmm. actually met, like, a very, I guess, long time ago, because, like, our program was only so big, and there's only so many people, but, like, there's not a lot of females, and there's not a lot of Asians in the program, so, like, I kind of stuck out, but, like, Jordan doesn't really stick out, because (laughs) he just, like, blends in with everyone else, so I think he was in my security class in like either second or third semester i sat behind wanda in security and every day i always sat behind her and i was part of the group of people that she spoke to or like he didn't speak up enough but she didn't know who i was (laughs) anyways that carried on for a semester (laughs) and the first time i think i actually like uh the first memory i have of him is that we were in this class and it was like a midterm and we're all in this lab together it was very hot in this midterm and he like walked out of like the midterm like he finished with i think within like 30 minutes and like he was the first person to walk out and that's my first memory of him and then it like, makes me I, sound like a super genius Thank yeah you. so later i asked him about it and i was like hey like how did you do so well and like how did you finish it so quickly like it took everyone else like the entire time and he's like oh, i just gave up like, I finished. Didn't you I finish? finished, but you just also, you're like, oh, I just gave up too. Like, you just didn't care. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't hard. <laughs> I mean, everyone, gave up. <laughs> the average was really low. It was really low. But I did fine. I think the average was like a 54 or something on the <laughs> term. Yeah. yeah. 
she had to change it or like strike it but then like my more i guess notable impression was like when he started his own like startup uh he i really wanted a t-shirt so then like i was like hey i'll promote your startup if you give me a t-shirt and then he did not the black t-shirt though the white one which is like not as good black quality. was for vips yeah, that was okay. a select membership <laughs> subscribe to our patreon and you get a black t-shirt and one was like oh i want that one but i yeah. told and so many never people wore i told so many people about the you did not tell me about this i told so many people at school like literally <laughs> everyone who walked by i was like hey have you heard of this sure sure okay we were a meme because we got money from the like university's business department's incubation thing and then we spend it all on t-shirts that <laughs> is so funny <laughs> so some people knew us like we had i think we got like 200 installs but it was only people in our program hey that's not bad that's pretty good it's like yeah. do you think podcast. it was the t-shirts for doing maybe we should do t-shirts yeah. too do it it's the best investment you can make if someone invests a thousand dollars in our podcast, uh, we will make merch. Mm-hmm. We'll make good quality merch, yeah. not the stuff that comes off in the wash. Yeah, I'll I will learn how to sew, and I will make our merch for us. This will be way cheaper. <laughs> Once Maybe. I learn how to sew, it's over for all the clothing companies out there. Maggie needs a new hobby, anyways. Okay, Jordan, what was your first impression of me? So I think the first time we met was when we went to Friends trivia. And prior to meeting you, uh, Wanda always described her friends group as very Asian. And I didn't what the know hell that, that mean? I didn't know what that meant. Exactly. That's the thing. Uh, um, there's no diversity. There's no. Di- yeah, I know what it means now. Yeah. It means that everyone has like origins from the eastern part of the world. I'm not calling all of you weeb. But when someone says to me, oh, very Asian, I don't know what to think. I grew up in a ESL. small town that's mostly white people. So very Asian to me is like, you just got here. You're like first generation. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm in the back of my mind. I'm like, OK, am I going to have to like really listen in? Like, is this going to be a tough conversation I'm about to walk into? <laughs> and uh, no, it was fine. It was it was great meeting you. Uh, the one thing I remember is you you were driving us from the place we were at to my car because we parked super far away and you put the car in reverse and like there was some ice behind you or something it made a big loud noise and then everyone was like maggie did you hit that car and you're like no no no, it's fine it's fine it's fine (laughs) i got out to check it was fine yeah it was but you were so sure like yeah you didn't even need to check you just knew it wasn't hitting the car Guys, when you get to my age, you just know this kind of stuff. Yeah, you become one with the vehicle. Yeah, exactly. With the, with, oh, I can't say my car name. Actually, yeah, okay, with the rap fours. I'm not going to dox myself, don't, right? Don't I leak your that. car name. <laughs> Her whole family is a family of rav fours. Like, they don't own any other cars. We, and when... We're brand ambassadors for the rav fours, okay? Toyota, think... if you're out there, if you want to sponsor us, hit us up in our DMs. We'll, we'll gladly take a car. Yeah, they like I seriously like every single time they've like changed cars, they've just changed to a newer model of the Rav Four. And Do you have a T-shirt for that? If you just stay within the Toyota family for long enough, like Wanda would. My dad got a hat once. That. Hey, that's pretty cool. Yeah. My first impression of Jordan. So prior to this, when me and Wanda started going to the gym, she was almost always on her phone, and I didn't mean to look, but I always saw like Jordan was there. And she, like, casually mentioned, like, Jordan before, but she was always texting him. So I was like, okay, something's going on. Don't expose me like that. And then, <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, like, Jordan's coming up a lot, but she doesn't really mention him to me. Mm-hmm. I was a then, secret. Yeah, you were a secret. But, like, I always mixed you up with, like, maps and stuff, so I couldn't really get the story straight. And then I finally met you at Friends Trivia, and I was like, oh, this is Jordan. And right away I was like, oh shit like something's gonna happen between them (laughs) and then I went home and I told my other friend Gabby about this and I was like Gabby trust me like this year they're gonna start dating like something's gonna happen with them like I'm calling it now and she was like okay sure fast forward you guys are dating and I'm like dude I knew it I am very psychic Maggie's my number one fan I remember I'm a supporter thanks for being my day one (laughs) 
I remember telling her about it and she's like, I knew it. She's like, I called it back in like months ago. I like, I told Gabby about it. Like, if you don't believe me, go ask her. I knew this was going to happen. I'm so good at this. What's the word called when you're not a matchmaker, but you know something's going to happen? A psychic. A psychic. Nice. A psychic <laughs> That's me. Um, and yeah, that was my first impression. But I think, I don't think I really talked that much that night, though. I think it was mostly about friends trivia. Mm-hmm. And I don't remember who else was there. Krabby. And Matt. The one that went on stream with me. Ah, okay. So him, him and met. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then I don't remember times. when else we we met. This may be the longest I've talked to you. I, I mean, there was like my birthday. Yeah. Right, and his birthday. <laughs> and his birthday. Okay, okay, getting back to the topic of personality. No, no. Now we're on personality. Short. <laughs> Keep up. Come on. Okay, so we're gonna go around and talk about our personalities. Wanda, I'll start with you. What's your personality? Oh no. Hi. Okay. So, uh, with the 16 personalities, I am an ESTJ, which is the executive. Essentially, I am a get stuff done person, big traditionalist, doesn't do well without routine. Um, I like things done a certain way, and I have issues with like new and innovative stuff, which I guess leads to the whole thing. <laughs> Part of my feedback was like, you should be more innovative, you should think of more creative situations to deal with stuff that like I've gotten from work like last time I was working so like I feel like it very it fits in with my personality I also did this other thing at work where it tells you like your like it's like four quadrants and like depending on the size of the bubble it's how much it like it uh aligns with your I guess personality and like work type and my like execution bubble is huge which like I have a very addictive personality in the sense where I, I need to if I start something I need to get it done like don't I can't do math like, <laughs> there's no dot in, in math <laughs> but like if I don't like so for example like I had the podcast I can't put it down until I finish editing it and I start uploading it so like I, I just sit there for a full three like three hours to go through it and I have to get it done or like I feel like there's something hanging over me I would say that's pretty accurate. Jordan, would you agree? Yeah, definitely. A hundred percent. Wanda, like, Wanda dives fully into what she's doing and doesn't stop until she sees the end. Yeah. I think you are one of the most driven people I know. Like, you, when you have a goal, you will stick to it. I can see how that can be a double-edged sword, but <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a good thing. It's what about good. you, Maggie? Me, I am, okay, E-S-F-J-T. So I'm extroverted, observant, feeling, and judging. I don't know if it's very accurate. So essentially, these type, these types of people, like, I always forget the name of my personality type, actually, but I remember because me and Taylor Swift have the same personality type. And as we all know, Taylor Swift is my number one celebrity, singer, whatever. Um... But we are both attentive, people-focused. We like being part of the social community. We are very devoted to people. We're kind of, we're supposed to be the the popular people, like very people-oriented. I don't feel that way, but I I can see it. I don't love people, but I respect people, if that makes sense. Um, But I've taken my personality type every year since I was 16, 17. And it stayed the same, which kind of worries me a little bit because now my personality is engraved in stone and it won't change. So I I guess I have like a few days left before I hit 25. But uh, but yeah, that's my personality. It's funny. Uh, I got a pro tip for that. Why when you're answering it? (laughs) You want me to lie to on a test? This is like this. This feels illegal. I think like me and Maggie's personality types are very similar and I don't think that's by like and like I guess we're close friends because we're so similar but like I don't think that's like a luck thing yes we're we're actually one letter apart yes so apparently I like 
with mine I have to have friendships with people who have like a lot of common ground with me like I tend to not seek people who are very different than I am and like (laughs) so having the same like basically the same personality type I think is very much uh within that realm just gonna say that mine says that it's it tries to keep people happy so it will try to befriend as many people as they can because they want everyone to be happy you're and such a people pleaser I am so I can see that so I can see where we get not that I try to please you but <laughs> I think but I think in that sense like we we mesh very well okay Jordan what's your personality so mine is Yen. oh god one sec Mine's ENFP, and it's called the campaigner. It says it's someone who's extroverted, intuitive, feeling, and prospecting. Uh, They tend to embrace big ideas and actions that reflect their sense of hope and goodwill towards others. Their vibrant energy can flow in many directions. And there's a quote here underneath it that says, it doesn't interest me in what you do for a living. I want to know what you ache for. And if you dare to dream of meeting your heart's longing it doesn't interest me how old you are i want to know if you will risk looking like a fool for love for your dreams for the adventure of being alive and it's kind of interesting cuz i'm very uh unable to just kind of accept like my current career my current like trajectory i'm always looking for like what's the thing that i like don't want to put down um so i think i'm like a step outside of what the personality says like I'm I'm on the path to being that, but I don't know what that is. But I'm also like very obsessed with getting there. Yeah. When I hear the campaigner, I think of like cult vibes. <laughs> like someone Maybe that's my thing though. Maybe I need to found a cult and that's when I'll know what I ache for. I don't know. Dev seems like a cult already, so you're already there. Yeah. I don't really buy into that cult though. It's kind of like it's funny that you say that because like constantly Jordan's like, oh, I need to find what I'm passionate in. I need to find that like, I don't want work to just be work. I want work to be the thing that like b- makes me want to wake up in the morning. Mm-hmm. Like Aww. I want to pursue the thing that I'm most passionate about. But the thing is, it's like, he doesn't know what that is. So then it's like, it's very difficult to find it. So Yeah. Then- and even I have this idea that like, there's going to be something that I can find that I'll just gravitate towards and start doing like even if I have like downtime like what's the thing that I go to and pick up the problem is that's reddit youtube twitch like it's it's like filling time rather than like finding that hobby or the thing that I actually am interested in doing so maybe it's just nothing no maybe it's the specific things you do like on twitch you you stream a very niche topic I don't know what it is, but it looks very niche and very cool. And if I was a dev, I would be into it. And I think the stuff you look at on Reddit and YouTube or whatever, it all plays into that hobby, like what you're interested in too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's more like information gathering than executing. So I'm like... Well, you're going to apply that information somewhere one day. Hopefully. My best story about why, like, I guess how Jordan is a campaigner and why I'm like the executive is because in Minecraft he always dives like head first (laughs) into situations where there's like a lot of unknown and I'll just be behind him like I'll never go into like a dark cave first because like I never know what's there and that's like terrifying but if he goes in first and he like explores it then I'm like I feel better about it and I'll go in watching you guys play Minecraft was probably the funniest thing I've seen all week. I think I only watched like parts of it. The first part I fast forwarded to was, oh, Jordan, did you die? And just Jordan, like, yes. And then again, he died. And then another part was where Wanda was like, oh, I, I'm going to get gold for us. Like, we need some gold. And Jordan was like, no, 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 we, we don't need that. And he sounded so done with you. And he was just like, okay, fine, just, just take my stuff. And he just gives you everything. And Wanda's like, no, you you keep this bread for yourself. You need this. And Jordan's just like, no, just take it. Just take it. We're, we're definitely leaving. <laughs> but it, okay. So he always tells me to like not do things. I'd be like, oh, do we need iron? He's like, no, we have enough. And then later, like, uh, like a few plays later, he's like, oh, we don't have enough iron because we died with all of our iron. <laughs> I'm like, but you literally told me to stop mining it. Like we, like, I was like, okay, let's be prepared. Let's 
like get a bunch so that we'll have it at home or whatever. So then like we never need to get it again. But he's like, no, 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 we don't even need it. And then I'm like, and now we beat the game and we have like four <laughs> stacks of iron because yeah, we spent two days but, getting iron. But, but it, we could make so many tools with the iron. Mm-hmm. And if we didn't have that, we wouldn't have that security of sure. having that much stuff. I think the difference is I'm more about the improvisation and the like, you, you don't need it till you need it. So there's no point to do it ahead of time. But I'm like, I need to be prepared. I need to have all the rations, like all the bread available, all the mm-hmm. like weapons available so that like, if I like keep losing things, I can always go back home and like, there'll be more of it. So on to weaknesses, is there, so, okay, Jordan, you're 25, right? Mm-hmm. So do you feel like there's something about your personality you wish you could change because now it's kind of too late for you? But do you find that you you wish that something about yourself could change like you you feel it's impacting your friendships, personal life, relationships, work, whatever it may be? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the the thing where I'm like always looking for the thing that is, you know, what drives me or what makes me want to get up in the morning kind of thing, it kind of leads to like a grass is greener kind of mentality where I'm always like struggling against there is something that will one day be that and I think it plays a lot into like the human psychology of like the hedonic treadmill of like you'll never have enough I'll be like oh okay well um I started streaming I I'm enjoying it a lot okay if I get a camera it'll be better I'll I'll enjoy it better it'll be like a better experience and then you get it and then nothing's actually different um and then the same thing kind of comes into play now I don't have any numbers like I have like eight followers but um a lot of people talk about it with you know achieving milestones of like a a hundred a thousand ten thousand a million and how the brain will always tell you that you need to hit the next milestone and you won't be satisfied till you hit the next milestone and so I think that comes to play in a lot of things like salary and and like viewership and uh yeah just like equipment or or um any kind of goal setting I do, I guess, is just like, once you're there, well, what's next? Instead of savoring the journey and savoring, you know, what you've accomplished, it's just like, now what can I do? Now what can I do? And being like constantly like hungry for more, it's which is not funny. terribly bad, but at the same time. you. Okay, Wanda, how about you? Is there, I mean, you've already talked about this before, but tell the people what, what weaknesses in your person or your 16 personal life come through in your personal life work life friendships relationships did i talk about this already you kind of talk about it like um but i'll let you i'll let you talk I, I like i can't remember can you remind me <laughs> well you've said before like you you um you're very narrow you have tunnel vision like everything has to be perfect you have a fear yeah. of of like when you do a task that it's not perfect that's what you've touched up before Oh, because I, I will let you that. elaborate. <laughs> I was just gonna say, I think I'm perfect. I have nothing about uh, what I, I want. Unless to that's fine too. <laughs> um, I mean, like ideally, I guess, yeah. Like being, I think I'm getting better though. Like I think I'm getting better at being able to start things, knowing that it's not going to be perfect. Like the first, if you watch the first episode of this podcast, there was a lot of things that like. The mic what do you mean? Her background was cool. <laughs> the first episode, though, like, every, like we didn't really have like that much prepared and everything. It was like the first time we did it all. So, like, I think I'm getting better at like jumping into situations where I know that the outcome is not going to be perfect. And even now, I'm not saying we're at the point where this is perfect, but I think we've improved a lot. And I've like I've started to enjoy the improvements that I can make to like things. So, like. I think I'm getting there. I think one of the other things is like, I'm, I wish I was more creative. Like I wish I could have less like routine in my life, I guess. Cause like one of the weaknesses that it mentions, it's like uncomfortable with unconventional situations. And I do find like, I get a lot of anxiety around like things where I haven't like done that before. Like the first time I ordered like a Starbucks drink, it was like very anxiety inducing because like it's, very different than like anywhere else where it's like small medium large and I like I don't want to be judged for doing things wrong so like I I think think everyone has that to to a degree like I definitely walking into like exactly Starbucks for the first time is nerve-wracking or walking into Starbucks with Wanda's order which is very large (laughs) and being like I need to get this right or they're gonna think I'm an idiot I think that like 
the other thing is like, I have, I, I'm, it's very difficult for me to process emotion, like, um, like sadness. So, uh, I, it takes me a long time to express, I guess, like if I ever feel sadness, like I usually have to go to the gym and like, think about it as I work out and then I can come back and talk like, and talk about it. But like, I can't like in the moment, if I'm like upset about something, I can't say it. Like, I don't know how to say it. So like, yeah, I, I guess that one. if I, those would, I guess those would be my three things that I would change. But other than that, I feel like I'm pretty perfect. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's a note to our viewers. You're perfect the way you are. Only change the shitty parts of it. <laughs> I I mean it's one of those like my personality goes well with how our society functions. So like capitalism. I'm, capitalism. Like I'm very nice. like I'm very productive. Like I'm very good at organizing things. I'm very productive. I'm kind of a like I a kind of an extrovert. So it's like I can do well with my existing personality, but I can do better. There you go. <laughs> What's your, what are your um, Actually, my weaknesses are very similar to yours on the 16 personalities website, like inflexible, reluctant to innovate or improvise. But also the things that sets us apart maybe a little bit is that I'm very sensitive to what other people say. And I'm very sensitive to other people's mood and feelings. So if someone is very critical of me or they, they think poorly of me, that's going to stay in my brain for a long time. And I'll always think about it. Like, if you slight me in any single way, I will remember it for 10 years. So just just keep that in mind, guys, just in case you want to talk shit about me. Um, so, yeah, that's something that I think will change over time, that I think I'll stop worrying about what other people think about me. But right now, it's it does come into play, I think, with almost every aspect of my life, work, person at work personal life, relationships, anything it is, it's just... I'm always very sensitive to other people and I need to stop that. Apparently I'm also very needy and that I will fish for compliments, but I think if anything, I, I get insulted more than anything. Okay, good. I was about to say, Meg, you look lovely today. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jordan. I wasn't even fishing. Um, okay. So I'm going to skip over the Hogwarts house that we want to talk about, but let's share our horoscopes. Jordan, we'll start with you. What's your horoscope? Your star sign? I'm, I'm a Libra. Can and I you don't describe? Know much, oh. I don't know too much about what that means. Um, I know that it's the the symbol is like a scale, like a liberty scale, which is um, like justice, peace, whatever. Um, so I just quickly Googled it, and it says that Libras are known for being charming, beautiful, and well-balanced. <laughs> for oh, the Spotify so listener or podcast listeners out there, Jordan made one of those. What are they called? Uwu faces. I don't oh, know God. what they're called. Is that I what it's know. called? <laughs> I don't know what my, my, my face on my hand. Um, but, we'll oh. we'll drop the we'll drop the link to his face so you guys can see what it looks like. <laughs> Album art for the podcast. <laughs> okay, Wanda, let's talk us through what your star sign is. Uh, I'm a Leo. Have. Which makes sense on why I think I'm perfect. Uh, <laughs> because I think, like, it's supposed to be like, oh, you're courageous, you're confident, I guess, and you're also very vain. Um, and I don't have, like, a story for me that perfectly captures what I think a Leo is, but I do have um, a friend. His name is also Matt, and he his friend and Jordan climbed up a mountain together and he brought an extra change of clothes so that he can change when he got to the top of the mountain oh so that he can have a perfect photo shoot where he like looked all spick and span. Um, and he's a Leo. So that is my go-to Leo story of what I think a Leo is. That is, that's good energy. I respect that. Also, Matt sounds like the kind of guy you would be good friends with. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, oh no, <laughs> <laughs> we we get into a lot of like bickering fights. Maybe it's like Leos and Leos don't get along with each other. Maybe that's what it is. It might be. I think it's because like both of us have very strong personalities, and 
we have strong opinions about things. So then like, so we worked in a group together with like Jordan in the last year of university. And I call Jordan the fire that was like, cause he added fuel to all of our fights. <laughs> Does that reflect more on me or more on the Leo's? No, it's because like as a as a Libra, I just want justice. He I did not. He did. You did fairness. not. You did well not bring, balance. That's where it comes yeah. in. You did not bring balance to the situation. I am an Aquarius. We are known to be the weird ones out of everyone. Like they're the most likely to be the lone wolf, and okay with that. Like they're quirky. I put quotations because I think that's really gross to say. You're so angry. Um, that's disgusting never describe that to me again um we're known to be progressive independent intelligent unique and idealistic i think that kind of goes against what my personality is where it says progressive actually no i guess progressive could mean different things than innovative but um i i would say that's pretty accurate to me the astrological sign only because maybe that's just how they market it but when you read some of the star signs you go oh my god that's totally me but maybe because you already know it's you and when i read like leos or libras i'm like oh, it's not me at all do you guys think they're accurate i think they're like there's definitely some people where like they're also leos but they're very opposite to some of the thing to some of the traits that i think are like typical leo so like they sh- share some but they don't identify with like uh, all of them so i think it really depends on like upbringing as well like i think part of it is like how can you say that all people born within this time frame are going to have very similar personalities yeah i don't know i think that's how the stars aligned at the time and that's what it means i think so to be more accurate if you get the time of birth that's supposed to give you a more accurate reading but i can't find a good website for that so but like stay tuned my time of birth is different because i was born in china so then it was like convert that to (laughs) est please (laughs) so i was reading about leo and libras and you guys have a very strong compatibility like they say that they are like leos and libras make good partners and that there is a 90 percent compatibility overall but for some reason, there is a 40% in trust that you guys do not trust each other very much, but compatibility is still there. Huh. That's it's... interesting because I think we have a lot of trust. Yeah. 40%. Like, that's one of the like big things is like there's not there's not a lot of thought that goes into like, I don't know, is Wanda doing something sketchy or is Jordan doing something sketchy? I mean, we don't go anywhere. So. <laughs> yeah, to both your your point of views, neither of you are very sketchy people. Yeah, that's I also fair. Which, which helps. Yeah. I, um, like, it's strange that like where you could horoscope wise, you can be compatible, but then like if you look at like personality types, you could not necessarily be compatible. Well, I think my the like I'm scrolling up and down a a Libra personality trait page and it's pretty close to campaigner like it it's pretty close it, like at least the weaknesses are the same the weaknesses are like and I didn't look at the weaknesses before when I was talking about what I would change about myself or what I like think is a weakness of me but things like indecisiveness or like um inability to like carry through on things like it says like you're really great at starting but you can't really follow through and that's me in a nutshell at least get to know they're kind of accurate. So yeah. Aquarius and Leo are very compatible. Um, in almost everything, we're like 90%. Like we overall have like a 99 or yeah, 90, 89% compatibility rate, which is way more than Leo and Libra, which leads us to our next topic slash game, which is who knows Wanda best. Nice. At the end of this game, Wanda's going to walk away with one partner. She's either going to dump Jordan or me. So if does I'm not here can... next week. Yeah, does that mean I could get promoted to podcast host? <laughs> you, if the show will be you now, Wanda and Jordan. Just know I, I will still stick around to handle this social media. Yeah, that's that's all I can really hope for. <laughs> Maggie's here looking for a buyout. <laughs> 
he's like slowly trying to auction like the podcast off to like whoever is most <laughs> whoever knows me best she's outsourcing at this point okay you know I'm, I'm okay with this just i just want to make sure that toyota gets in first and then i'll leave okay so now we'll start off with a very easy question which three countries are on my asia trip oh i know this I think it was so picky. Three. No, wait, no, wait. <laughs> it keeps showing up in black. Okay. I, I'm i not 100% on this. Three, two, one. Read out your answers. Hey, Indonesia, Vietnam, Singapore. Okay, mine is Korea, Japan, and Singapore. You're both wrong. What? Yeah. It's Singapore, Korea, and Indonesia, specifically Bali. Oh, it's- man. So for some reason, I had Vietnam in my mind, but I had Korea. I had Japan, which we, I swapped we to Korea, which I swapped to Singapore. I would never go. I said I would I never go to Japan just because of the culture. What culture? What? The weave the culture. culture. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really weave, though, if it's their own culture. Uh, I'm not going to answer that. but. Uh, it's one week in Singapore, one week in Korea, and then two weeks in Bali. Okay, you both got two, then you're still... Crap. You're both tied. Aha! What was my favorite drink from second year? Bonus points if you can guess the type of alcohol I used to mix it with. But it, not, it was very unconventional. Oh. Um. I didn't know you. Yeah, but I've, talked, <laughs> but I've talked about this. I didn't know you. No, but I've mentioned this multiple times. I didn't know every you. single every single time we went. I don't out, drink. Every single time I went out, I told uh-huh. you I was like in second year. I always just, this is my go to drink. Like you might not be able to get the bonus, but like you should be able to figure out what my go to out drink is. I don't really know my alcohols. Okay. Also, I didn't really go out in second year with you. I know, but you. I've talked to both of you about this. Hundred okay. percent. Three, okay. two, one. Reveal. Okay, read it out. Vodka and Lee Croy. Lee. <laughs> okay, mine is Jolly Rancher Sour Plus mixed with tequila. That seems actually pretty good, but no, you guys what? are Some swamps. It's vodka cranberry. Um, that is my go-to. Like whenever I go out to like a bar or something, I always get that as my mixed drink. And then, Did I get it then? No. No? Because it was my, vodka. No, because in second year, what I used to mix it was, with is Bacardi pineapple rum and cranberry juice. I have told both of you. It's actually really good. What are my top two relationship deal breakers? Uh, I know one of them because it's know, really. highly relevant to my like living situation. Uh, living at home. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Three, two, one. Sure. Mine aren't funny. I'm just laughing because they're very generic. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jordan, you go first. Okay, I put smoking and making less money than Wanda. <laughs> okay, I put abusive and mansplainer. <laughs> those are very, um, I mean, yes, but I feel like those are more of like a... Like, like for Maggie, yeah. like- as an abusive mansplainer, I wouldn't be here today <laughs> talking to you both. I, I I feel like you should have dug a little bit deeper. Those are the bare minimum of what you want. It's like when Kelly and Empire Bling is like, I just want someone I can trust, and everyone else is like Kelly. That's like the bare minimum. <laughs> um, it's smoking and kids. But Which, kids is really? a contentious topic with you. Yeah, because you a... want the option. No, 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 no. You change your mind like no, every week. I, I don't want them to have kids already. And like, uh, uh, okay, that's a, I've, that's a... I've talked about this really yeah. recently with you, both of you. You actually have, but I forgot. Okay. I I listen. I swear. <laughs> I just forget. <laughs> okay. Are my mom and dad's name on my phone? Like, what is their contact name? Okay. Three, two, one. Reveal. Oh. 
Okay, <laughs> Jordan, you go first. I got Mother Dearest and Daddy O. I know Mother Dearest is correct, but I'm iffy on Daddy O. Well, Wanda, because I respect your privacy, I don't really look at your phone that often. <laughs> I was going um, to say, I this isn't because I look at her phone or go through her phone in any way, but she's had me like respond to her mom before. And also, like, if I'm like, picking up her phone it always has a mother dearest mm, that's why your trust is at 40 percent. however <laughs> maggie earlier in the conversation said i saw jordan's name come up on your phone a lot and i had to wonder what's going on here um so i'm just gonna put that out there into the world um i i know when to pick and choose when to peek okay and it texts between a mother and father they're intimate um, I think so those I are put like the most reasonable ones. <laughs> I put birth giver as your mother. I think that was the high school one. I'm sure it changed. And Darth Vader because I felt like even though you don't like Star Wars, I felt like you you'd laugh at that. Ah, like my dad is evil. <laughs> you you said it. <laughs> uh jordan is 100 percent correct i've never <laughs> had my mom as birth giver on my phone either That's a lie you had your mom as birth giver in high school no i did not i had my mother as her name in high school that's a that's a lie i'm actually proud of mine on your dad's part because it's not like he ever messages you yeah that's just like deep knowledge that's deep wanda lore <laughs> <laughs> it's on my wiki page wanda lore yeah. okay what is my favorite body part on myself? This is actually really hard because you could say like I have a lot, but this is like this has always been my like favorite thing on myself. Always? Always. Ever since I was a wee lad. Okay. Hmm. That's tough. I I guess. I'm gonna keep <clears throat> it. I don't okay. care. Three, two. What? I put butt because you always look at it in the mirror. I think everyone does. <laughs> Maybe looks at Wanda's butt in the mirror. <laughs> everyone look at their butt. I assume so. Not that like I'm proud of my butt, but I just like want to keep looking at it. Um, Wanda also talks about it extensively. Uh, um, I put wrists. So Maggie's actually correct because hmm. I said, "What is my like?" It's this is what has been my favorite part since I was a wee lad. Yeah, so, I understand my, that. My wrist or slash my forearms, I really like them. I think they're perfectly proportional and I think they've only gotten better. <laughs> <laughs> Aged well with time. Aged well with time. So, so funny. I don't know how you got that, Maggie, but I'm very proud of you. Because, because I think they commented too. I was like, oh, like back a while ago. Like, far back in high school, I was like, oh, your wrists are so nice. And then you were like, yeah, thank you. They're, like, my favorite part. That actually me. sounds like a very possible conversation that we've yeah. had. So, <laughs> so that's why I'm like, I think this is what we that's, talked about. Do they have wrist models, like, maybe for, like, watch companies? Maybe. Yeah, you can, you can do it. What made me choose the university I went to? Three, two, one, reveal. <laughs> okay, Jordan, you go <laughs> I said the low bar of entry because it, the alternative was like Waterloo and you didn't get into it. You got into other ones though. Like Windsor. There was other one you liked. Okay, Maggie, what was yours? I heard you heard the campus food was the best around. Um, technically Jordan's like mostly correct. I it's because I didn't get into Waterloo. What about <laughs> the campus food? I didn't know about that until I actually got there. Yeah. Oh, pretty, what? Pretty dope, though. Even I knew that. I did not. I did not visit Guelph. I did not know Me about either. Guelph. I like nothing. Like, I was very new to this situation. That yeah. is fair. Kay. I knew nothing about it. I just showed up day one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not even to orientation. Just day one of classes. Wait, you guys didn't go to Frost Week? No, I I, I did, but it wasn't that fun. So mm. actually, yeah, same. You lived at home though, so. Yeah, I I regret living at home for first year, but after that, seeing how everyone had such like shitty living situations, like bug infestations, brown water coming out of the pipes, broken mm. countertops, yeah, I'm okay with living at home. So the final score is Jordan has four and Maggie has one. I demand. Oh, right. 
So you already won. What do you mean she didn't reach him? I should get a half point at least. You yeah, we should be working on. Is am I wrong? <laughs> um. And regardless, no matter what half points y'all are getting, Jordan still wins. All right, Jordan, you get to walk away with Wanda Surprise, so I will be here next podcast. <laughs> you get to walk away with our podcast. Yay! Nice. I've never won a podcast before. Now, okay. according to my personality, I'm terrible with follow through, so it's like <laughs> the podcast that died here. <laughs> It was a nice run, everyone. Okay, so based on our personalities, we're going to play a game of who is most likely. We're going to read out some questions, and we're going to put, of the three of us, who is more likely to belong to this situation. Okay, so I will read the first question. The first question is, who is most likely to get famous first? Okay, so Jordan thinks that he's most likely to become famous first. Jordan, tell the people why. Because I'm out there on that grind. I'm a campaigner. I'm diving in first. Uh, also, you can't follow through. Podcast is going <laughs> to die next week. I, it's more like it's akin to winning the lottery. You know, I'm just going to find something and get there first. And it's going to take off. See, you see what happens? Things just fall into the white man's lap. Yes, that's <laughs> the moral of this story. Can we? Yeah, let's also take it from that lens. The amount of asian representation is not that high i mean it's on the it's trending upwards but just historically i mean yeah many white boy minecraft youtubers are there yeah a million yeah and i could be the a million in first by the time i break into streaming or start streaming minecraft i'm gonna be famous just you wait mm, it's oversaturated sorry maggie <laughs> Okay, I was me the last Wanda... one to get into the game before it became <laughs> overplayed. No, you know what, Wanda? The second you do it, we're going to show it. Um, okay, so me and Wanda had put Maggie as most likely to get famous first. Wanda, why did you put me? I feel like you want it more. Um... <laughs> <laughs> it's not a good thing. <laughs> I feel like your desire to go viral, uh, your drive yes. for fame... Uh, it's just higher than all of ours. I, okay, by fame, I just want our podcast to be famous. Like, I want us to blow up on social media. I don't actually want me to be famous. I do think about it sometimes. Like, you know, in the mirror, you'll do, like, interviews with, oh, Jimmy, you're so funny. Like, with Jimmy Fallon. I think I'll think about it. I've never done that before, but I'll take your word for it. Yeah. Do you practice meeting fans in public? (laughs) Yeah. Do you guys not? No. (laughs) That's funny, though. Who is most likely to hold a grudge for 10 years? Easy. Maggie said Maggie. Yeah. <laughs> I stand by that. <laughs> I still don't like this girl from grade 9. I don't like someone from grade 3. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll give... <laughs> I think yes. that's, that's more I powerful. Think, I think you hold more grudges. If anything. Like, you... You, like yours was that girl from grade 3, and one of our teachers from grade nine from civics that oh. one teacher you kept talking about yeah i still remember him i'm not gonna go into it but he wronged me and if i ever see him again he's he's gonna get it yeah i'm, I'm making punching gestures <laughs> i i think i like holding grudges um so I'm never going to give any of mine up. And they say to, like, let go of your grudges to be happy. But I think I'm happy with my grudges. I feel that. Jordan, why did you say me? <laughs> um, yeah, I just think you're very prone to forming and holding grudges. And, I mean, comparing against... I don't know Maggie enough to know her history of holding grudges. But if you look at myself, uh, my very first introduction to you is grudge forming and yet now we're together so i'm not the best i holder i think the quote um forgive but never forget i stand by that quote i forgive you but i will never forget this and you are you will never be the same in my eyes there's an episode of i carly where um i think his name is neville he's like you will rue you will rue the day and yes. I, I, it really speaks to me. Who was most likely to be a teacher's pet? Okay. Um, we all had very different <laughs> answers. Yeah. Jordan put me as, or Jordan put himself. Yep. Jordan, why do you think? 
because I'm very agreeable and I think I I seek to not rock the boat and I always found in through school not that I was ever labeled it but I was always like more communicative towards teachers than other other people would be like a lot of people just kind of like they come into class and then they do their thing and then they leave but like prior to university I would probably be the person that would like actually talk to the teacher as like a human being rather than just being a student Um, so like I actually had like a couple instances of where like there was an English teacher um that invited me along to like trips of their class like there was like a media class that went to Toronto every uh semester and I've been like invited on that trip because the teacher liked me um and even though I had nothing to do with it and I say I say not Wanda because I don't think Wanda tries to be friends with the teacher or be like agreeable towards the teacher I think she's just more likely to complain to them or to like fight them on things because she wants her grades I changed my answer yeah you did (laughs) (laughs) I don't think Wanda's a good teacher's pet I I think she's the bane of the teacher's existence that's a good point she's the bad kid without being the bad kid she's the one the teachers are like oh god it's her again yeah yeah I I think I'm, like, there's definitely, like, some profs where I've gotten, like, I know them pretty well and I can just, like, chat with them. But I never would be, like, if that prof did wrong, I would never be, like, oh, like, it's okay. Like, he's still a good person and everything. I would, like, be as quick to criticize them um, than, like, even if I was, like, in good terms with them. So I changed my answer to Maggie because being the people-pleasing person that she is, I think she would be the best teacher's pet you are not wrong i was labeled as teacher's pet growing <laughs> up so <laughs> that's gotta hurt that did hurt my feelings i went home and cried oh it's fine i still hold the grudge against her <laughs> who is most likely to be the cool parent oh okay <laughs> unanimous <laughs> we all put jordan 100 yeah. percent. no yeah. no argument there yeah. That's because he's a man, okay? And we all know dads don't do anything. But also, like, I'd be, like, I think I'd be pretty carefree, but I'd also, at the same time, like, you're still going to get the grade. You're still going to be doing extracurriculars and everything that you want mm-hmm. to do. Mm-hmm. But, like, I feel, yeah, I, like, I'd definitely be the stricter parent. Yeah. yeah. I'm about the laissez-faire, the hands-off, you know? Raise oh, themselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like you're one years old, you can like walk yourself. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Here's my credit card. <laughs> so. No, but I see it. But I think it comes down to your personality too. I think you're you're not that strict. Yeah. You you're and very I have like saying no. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, you're gonna have a spoiled kid. Oh no, hell Don't no. Think I'll have kids. <laughs> if you decide to have kids or a pet of some sort, mm-hmm. you will spoil them. Oh, I would totally. Okay, so this is kind of like a side thing that I've been like talking to Jordan about. But if I have a dog, I'm going to give it dog birthdays so that Mm -hmm. like I want to Pavlov it into knowing when its birthday is every single year because like I want them to get excited about their birthday. Like I'm excited about my birthday. So like I want to see if I can like somehow like hint to them each and every year that it's their birthday coming up. And, like, Jordan doesn't think that a dog will be able to remember, like, year to year, but I think I could do it. Yeah, my argument is that you can train them to know that something's going to happen. Like, for example, if every time I put my coat on, I leave for the day, then the dog knows I'm putting my coat on, I'm about to leave. But if you only leave once a year, they probably won't remember. And also, if it's a single day out of that year that you do the thing they probably won't be able to correlate it because they don't know that it happened because their memory isn't that good um if you're a dog expert send us an email let us yeah. know if this is ethical <laughs> how, is not, how is it not ethical i want to make sure that my dog knows when it's its special day mm-hmm. mm, kind of weird if children can know i don't know why dogs can't that's my argument <laughs> Yeah, but they understand yeah, but calendars. Society Pavlov's the kids. Yeah, like, and this I can is Pav- you. I can Pavlov the dog. This because- is you single handedly Pavloving the dog for I mean- a purpose. Does the dog care about having a special day to it? Like every day is special. 
Yeah, but I want it to be like you I want, want a reason to party or celebrate <laughs> for my dog. Yeah. I just I just wanted to know. I just wanted to have one day or like a week or something where it's like coming up and they just they feel the excitement of their birthday. You know, like I want to give them that joy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you're gonna decorate the house for birthday week? Yes. Like I'm gonna let slow- us know in the comments if this is ethical or not. Have you done this, this with blurry your dog? Lines. <laughs> Uh, anyways, Send us some pics. <laughs> crazy dog, crazy dog mom is me. <laughs> <laughs> Who is most likely to be the first to say that they're not having a good time and complain? Wow. Okay. So, what I'll say, I said Wanda because I think Wanda's very upfront with herself and true to herself about Aww. whether or not she enjoys something. I know I have difficulty being like, is this fun? I don't know. I I have to see it out first. I have to like reflect back and be like oh that was a total waste of time or whatever but wanda will know pretty quickly whether or not something's for her and she will go all in on it so if she's like no this is dumb i hate this then she's gonna know pretty instantly and she's going to let you know because she doesn't want to waste her time on it yeah me (laughs) me at the board game cafe complaining the (laughs) entire time (laughs) i will say though like even in a group setting you will complain but when it's like us traveling you don't complain even if it's times where i know you you might be tired or like hungry you won't complain like you'll go along with it you'll be a good sport i would just like to say vacation wanda is a different wanda than what real life that is that is a good point (laughs) (laughs) i i don't like to like take charge on vacation i like someone else to plan everything out for me and i just go along with it and that's kind of like very different to what i am normally so i think like you can't take vacation wanda and compare it to me real wanda <laughs> that's why i had to put Multiple you people. slash jordan is do you find that he complains no not complaints but only when i think when he's really hungry like for your birthday <laughs> he was in such a bad mood and it was my birthday it was cheesecake factory like we didn't know like about the reservation thing we were all like trying to figure it out he was in such a bad mood, <laughs> but that was only the one time. Yeah. yeah. The difference but- is one, it basically tells me not to eat because we're going to eat a lot during the day. <laughs> and then we get like delayed and it's like, okay, I haven't eaten at all. And then I find out she did eat in preparation <laughs> because she didn't know she's going to eat or not. And then I'm like, oh, well, I just got screwed. Ah, uh, I would just like to say that I did not eat that day either. I I'm just did. more okay with you not- snacked. We had Chick-fil-A guys and we found out it wasn't that good. Yeah. yeah. I, I at just least like, Canadian Chick Fil A, not that good. Yeah, yeah. I would just like to say, uh, I don't. I think I might have had like one piece of something. Like I think I might you have ha- had like a pita. Mm-hmm. You had something going into it because you admitted it, and I was like, <laughs> bullshit. Yeah, but I'm also like, <laughs> I want my money back. <laughs> I think you're just a very hangry person. Like, it, yeah, you my brain shuts off if I get too hungry. Yeah, I can't focus anymore. Or act like a normal person. You're just pure yeah. anger. I lose, I lose, like, the ability to process things properly. <laughs> you're not you when you're, you're not you when you're hungry. Yeah. Have a first candy bar to sponsor this podcast. To close it off this week, uh, our pressing question is, do you want your personality to stay the same throughout your life? Slash, are you happy with your personality? I think we also answered this. Yeah, I I think I have no choice. I I don't know what else there is to be <laughs> except this personality. Can you make a course on how to change your personality? I think it'll sell. Yeah. Well. Let us know. Let us know how to be the best version of ourselves. Or how to be Rihanna. I think I would want her personality. I think her personality is not giving a shit. I want that. <laughs> and also, Rihanna, if you're listening, drop that album, sis. It's She's been not too listening. long. It's been many moons five years actually and if you like this episode uh feel free to follow us on twitter tiktok youtube wherever you get your podcasts you can find our link in the link tree below because we got tired of putting each individual link in so kudos to Maggie for doing that nice um, follow Jordan too on his Twitch stream at Jordidn't. Um, sometimes we make appearances. I think mostly Wanda, but I'm there in chat. 
See, it's mostly Wanda. Okay, well, thanks for tuning in, guys. This has been Apologetically Me. Bye. 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 Thank you.